Mm -hmm. uh, call to order the uh, regular uh, meeting of the Board of Directors, Wednesday, February 19th. And I'd ask uh, Director Hund if he'd lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, in my nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, item number three, determination of a quorum. President Johnson, you have a quorum. All right. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All of those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 So moved, so done. Item five, public comment. This is a time set aside for public comment on any district-related matter not appearing on the agenda. Government code prohibits the board from taking action on these items, but they may be referred for future consideration. Please state your name and limit your comments to three minutes or less. Are there any public comments? Seeing none, hearing none, I'll move on. Entertain a motion to approve the uh, consent calendar. Matters on the consent calendar considered routine in nature will be enacted in a single motion without discussion. Any board member or public uh, may request an item be removed from the consent calendar and acted on separately. We'll be looking at December 2019, January 2020 check registries, which are my favorite, and uh, the draft minutes from the February 5th board meeting. I'll entertain a motion or any comments. Oh, they look good to me. Uh, I'll second the motion. Okay. All right. So moved. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So moved, so done. Mm -hmm. Item 7. Consider awarding contract for codification to a municipal code corporation at a cost of $14,690, including a 30% contingency fee. Mm -hmm. Good evening. Uh, the Finance Committee uh, met and discussed uh, this topic earlier this month and has referred to the Board uh, for approval. So uh, I am the most knowledgeable employee here at the Water District about the rules and regulations. I've written a lot of the rules and regulations and with my impending retirement I believe this codification can really serve the district well by you know, putting uh, uh, employees, other employees in a position of, of really being able to get in, dig in, find everything they need in the rules and regulations. Um, with, uh, we put this into the budget this year, so we're all prepared to, to do this project. So a request for a proposal, an RFP was uh, issued, looks like November, uh, we were, uh, to five different uh, companies. We got proposals back from three of them. One of those was thrown out as being unresponsive. They didn't really comply with the requirements. And the other two from Code Publishing and Municipal Code Corporation were reviewed and evaluated. Beverly and I um, looked at in, in detail at the proposals. We had uh, conference calls with, with each of the two responsive bidders in order to determine that what we understood is what, you know, is what was uh, was there and then reviewed our findings and recommendations with uh, manager ban so um, our recommendation is unanimous and results in a cost that is significantly under budget uh, we're recommending that the contract be awarded to municipal Cor code corporation in the amount of eleven thousand three hundred plus a thirty percent contingency and we'll talk about that a bit later for a total authorization of fourteen six ninety that is a savings of over thirty five thousand dollars compared to the budget but you know wasn't all that dramatic the budget was simply wrong because all the proposals came in in that same range who knew you could get it so cheap we've been waiting all these years to take care of this thinking it was really a big ticket item so anyway uh, aside from a really great price which is significantly below the established budget uh, we had several reasons for uh, selecting them their proposal was the most complete and thorough they really addressed all uh, each and every one of our requirements and offering other services uh, in addition that are useful to a public agency such as ourselves um, they have outstanding qualifications. They've been in business 68 years. They have 160 
employees, over 4,400, 4,000 clients, a really a large company, um, much uh, larger and, and in business much longer than code publishing. And I think that really correlates to all these additional services that they have in place. They've, they've progressed far beyond just codification that, you know, they've, their company has just been around uh, through much more evolution. Um, they also host uh, additional documents. So they're going to host things like our employee handbook, our administration code, things like that for a really uh, cheap price, 350 bucks a year up to 25 gigabytes. And it, that allows us to search both the code that they're going to develop for us and those documents at the same time. So that's a real time saver. And, and we could talk to Beverly for hours about that subject and all of the copious research that she did for the first couple of years uh, at the district here. So this is a huge time saver, you know, real dollars. And other proposals were as much as $9,900 for this hosting service. So $350 bucks will pay for it for, you know, 20 years uh, for less. And the timeline is about nine and a half to 11 and a half months, so might be just enough time to get it done before I retire. So um, they also have a host of additional features and uh, services. Um, so they have more robust uh, features, even related to codification, more search capabilities, uh, comparisons to prior codes, all kinds of really great options, but they also have many other additional services that, that we use um, or would use or want to use. Uh, Laserfish content management is one that we're already looking into. They, they do that. Records request software, um, online payment solutions, agenda management software, that sort of stuff. Some of those services we already have with other providers, but to consolidate um, services like that with one vendor is certainly a cost savings and often a, a time savings, which saves you know money, but is often also uh, you know the cost themselves. The fees can be less when you combine these types of services. So the other responsive proposer didn't have most of these other services in their uh, you know wheelhouse so uh, references we got good references uh, from a company that is in the process like uh, like we will be embarking on they're not done yet they're moving through codification they're right on time they're right on budget um, so that all sounds good and then Cucamonga Valley Water District which uh, we uh, really respect uh, the work uh, and, and that agency, and they're a longtime customer, at least 10 years. Muni's done a really good job for them, no problems whatsoever uh, with them. So, so that, in my mind, was the most uh, valuable uh, reference. You know, and, and companies are not going to provide you with names of companies that don't like their service. So, you know, there, there's, there's not a whole lot of value in my mind to, to some extent with references and knowing a company as we do Cucamonga Valley Water District, to me, is most valuable. Um, so it's important to understand that once we get through this codification process, we will have to continue to pay annual fees to host our, our online code, as well as to codify new resolutions as they're adopted by the board. So based on an estimate of the number of resolutions we'd be doing each year, and then all of these uh, full suite of optional codification features. It's about $2,000 a year. Now, we may not need all of those more, uh, you know, robust or optional services. We're going to try them all out, see what works for us, cancel what doesn't. It's still going to be, you know, $1,500 or more a year uh, for this work and more if there are more resolutions or, or larger resolutions. So, um, we're recommending, here's the 30% contingency, because the actual final cost of the codification is based on the number of pages. No one can estimate at this point in time, or no one can know for sure the number of pages. Not even me. I mean, I've told them how many resolutions, but, you know, there are pages, you know, behind each one of those. So. Uh, we built in a larger contingency, 30%. 10% uh, is our typical, but that 30% is only $3,400 of contingency, so it's not a huge, huge amount. But I think that gives us that extra pad just in case, you know, the number goes over, and then we don't need to, you know, come back here again. So in the, in the packet, you saw a sample of uh, this is actually an update. It's a supplement, so this is what it looks like when a, an, an update to the code comes through um, 
it, it's got at the end of each of these sections sort of how, you know, we'll show a resolution number. So it, it indicates how the code has evolved over time, which is what's really so important for staff. What was the resolution that initiated this? What were the uh, resolutions that changed it? When did that occur? That sort of stuff. So uh, it, it'll be interesting, um, you know, to, to see this uh, as it evolves. One of the largest time uh, frames within the process is the review of the document once they've finished their work and it comes back to staff. So that's when a lot of the work is going to take place on our end, which could, I mean, it could be months. It could be months of work um, to do that. So as I said, you know, hopefully we'll have enough time to, you know, get it done uh, before the end of the year. And so I feel really uh, excited to bring this forth happy to answer any questions. Thank you. I'll take a public comment if there are any. Uh, hearing none, then I'll ask the board for comments if they have any. Um, I'd just like to thank you, Susan, for such a uh, great and comprehensive report as oh, usual. Sure. And I don't know what we're going to do without you. So, <laughs> no. Um, no, it's, You'll figure it's, it out. <laughs> yeah, we, we'll have You'll to. You'll have to. Right? <laughs> and but, we'll <laughs> but um, thank you so much, and um, this this looks good to me, and I and I recognize the the need and the value of, yeah. of having this to yeah. staff and to the board and right. to the water district. Right. right. Um, Anybody? My turn, <laughs> sir. <laughs> Very well. Um, the um, the money for this. Um, I noticed that uh, in the in the budget that we have uh, fifty thousand uh, dollars set aside for uh, reports and studies, it, and, and that's um, what I. It, my understanding is it's restricted. Uh, Board it, restricted, not legally yeah. restricted. Correct. Yes. Uh, does that does that. Um, money for this come from that or does it come from someplace else well it comes from the fund the 50,000 it, it's a coincidence because we do fund I think 50,000 a year to the reserve remember the board sets aside money in reserve um, for this kind of thing mm -hmm. in this case it just so happens that the budget budget that was established for this project was also fifty thousand dollars so they would theoretically wash where the money that we're setting aside matches the money that we're going to spend in the year but in this case we're setting aside fifty thousand dollars for all of these kinds of reports that come up periodically but we're going to spend fifteen thousand on it so we'll gain a little ground this year or spend it on other reports and studies that we're doing does that answer the question yes okay yes uh, I, I appreciate by the way that uh, there's some explanation about the contingency mm. uh -huh. um, I've expressed some interest in you know where this percentages come from right. and all of that and this looks well considered mm -hmm. and uh, explained on paper <laughs> um, uh, too uh, this you mentioned that there's going to potentially there if we go with a the bigger menu mm -hmm. there's there's going to be uh, a yearly cost of potentially two thousand dollars right. or so a year but I'm, I'm looking in your letter of uh, of explanation and you you point out that in con this is on page two the first paragraph uh, you point out that uh, there could be a consolidation of the people that we've subcontracted some mm -hmm. of these other things to right. and, that, and that there's a potential savings in that I mean none of that's considered here because those are options that exist for mm -hmm. us that are not yet haven't yet been explored I mean for mm -hmm. example we're in a contract with with a company for online payment solutions so you know we'd have to figure out what these costs are you mm -hmm. know is there any cancellation clause you know all those kinds of things so there's potential for future savings here and if not in real dollars paid to vendors Vendors, then in time that staff you know is is taking to deal with all these various players to have fewer vendors that we're dealing with to handle more issues takes less time well I, I uh, was looking at um, I was kind of roaming around in the uh, libraries these days <laughs> and I noticed that in this uh, Western uh, technology solutions uh, study we did um on our the organization uh, mm -hmm. uh, of the place one of the one of the the comments was that um 
that was made was that uh, th there wasn't a common language of communication between the different areas um, of what we do in a lot of the, the I can read it here but I don't want to get too boring yeah. too boring um, you know in the way we um, in the way we one area of the business talks to another area of the business it's mm. literally kind of different terms okay. or languages or something like that and so I was thinking that if this some sort of a cons consolidation would occur where everybody's uh, sort of speaking the same uh, uh, language, mm -hmm. so to speak, that there would mm -hmm. be an efficiency um, um, in that kind of thing. It's um, uh, somewhat of a uh, oblique point, but this came this Weston study. They surveyed everybody in mm -hmm. the, in the operation here, right. and that to me has some meaning that these kinds of you know no one hand doesn't know what the other one is doing kinds of stuff. And it, you know mm -hmm. if we could consolidate some of these mm -hmm. uh, paperwork functions um, you know it would be a benefit uh, for for everybody also too I noticed uh, um, that their numbering system their numbering system for this uh, f for all of these uh, sections and paragraphs and all this other kinds of stuff uh, is formulated in such a way to where if things have to be inserted later or modified in such a way to where there's differences in lengths and stuff, you don't have to shuffle the entire right. document. Yes. There's, there's room. Yeah, yes. there's room to insert yes. things without right. following up your numbering and your table of contents and, uh, and stuff like that. I hope that they have a substantial, in all of these things that they do, substantial glossaries in, um, in these things. That would be uh, uh, really great. And... Um, I was looking in the strategic plan. Um, I didn't bring it with me. Um, and um, there's a comment in there about how this, uh, during this time, we're supposed to update the employee handbook. And there's $5,000 budgeted for it, which is a very rough or round number, I, I assume. Um, uh, well, let me discover my rediscover my train of thought here. Oh yeah, it was that. It was that um, they're not going to write any of our material. They're, that's for us to do. They're simply going to codify it and insert it in wherever it uh, it belongs. Well, important to understand that one of the uh, another one of the very time consuming aspects of this project is that they will go through each and every resolution or ordinance and ensure that there's no conflict with another ordinance or resolution. There's no conflict with law with other law. So there's a, a an exhaustive legal review that go that takes place uh, during this uh, process and at the end will most certainly result in a resolution with a whole list of amendments of changes that they recommend for us to make so those would be adopted in mm -hmm. sort of one you know one hopefully shorter but maybe really long a resolution to correct you know over 50 years of resolutions so uh, that is normal that's expected to happen but yes a legal review and and potentially some wordsmithing yes could occur Absolutely. But it will come that, back to the board <laughs> sure. for approval in, or in another resolution. Well, I, I, it just impresses me that that would be very uh, labor intensive. Yeah. And if we're getting that right. too, right. That's, that's, a really, right. um, that's a really big deal. Is there any um, um, chance that some of these things are going to end up on the website? Oh, that's what this is. The whole, uh, the codification will be on the website and okay. people will... Um, sorry, I have a bug here. Um, people will link um, on our website just like they do when they try to make a payment. That takes them to another, you know, a payment portal. They will link on our website to a site that Mu that Muni is hosting, but it will look like our website, and you know, you'll get to the code from there. And if anybody hasn't looked or doesn't know exactly what we're talking about here, High Desert Water District has their code on their website. It's called District Code. And, and I, I'm there all the time. I look there all the time. There's all kinds of, um, you know, policies to, to be uh, gleaned from there. So The question came up because um, I do have some trouble with the website, um, but I could not find an employee handbook mm -hmm. um, on the website, so that's why it came up. Also, when I would um, 
this is something about the consolidation part too when I'm searching for certain things um, I think it was uh, Gary Sturtevant's uh, uh, had a hazard mitigation uh, report it came across on some kind of a word pad thing mm -hmm. uh, which was very hard to uh, work through but yet other things that we have other documents that we have on the website uh, they come up uh, yeah. beautifully okay. uh, uh, so it just uh, was something that uh, comes to mind over time are you giving me dirty looks yet <laughs> uh, I'll stop there thank you very much you're welcome Director Unger. Tom, don't stop. You're on a roll. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I, I read this stuff, you know. It, it, it comes Tom, uh, Tom was at the finance uh, mm -hmm. committee meeting, but could not speak or ask <laughs> questions then. Right. And I know what that's like. You're furiously writing down notes, the things that you want to ask. And uh, so thanks. Those are, those are all good uh, directions to go on this. And thank you guys so much, because I know you've been working on the handbook, the administrative code, the <laughs> classifications, mm -hmm. all of this stuff. And yeah, the hazard hazard mitigation, we can get all this stuff online so people can see it. Mm -hmm. And to do all the work to put all this together, and I think that 30% contingency is just so wise. I mean, a contingency is usually like 10%. Mm -hmm. So this is, that was really good. I'm uh, very, very pleased and and. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, A lot sure. of work, but thank you. Sure. Thank you, Beverly. Director Reynolds. Thank you. Um, well, I'm a bottom line kind of a guy. Um, so seeing, starting with the numbers, we were anticipating a $50,000 expense. Mm -hmm. um, we've got thirty-five grand to go have a pizza party. And it, it, that's, that's wonderful. You know, and I'm joking, of course, for the pizza, you can buy pizza for... Thirty-four um, thousand, and a pen. Uh, but uh, we can, we we can be excited that we're spending a lot less money on something that was already planned to do. Um, so approving this is for me a no-brainer. Um, it is kind of exciting. Uh, codification is a new word for this limited uh, vocabulary, and that was fun. And, and so that captured my, you know, my attention um, as this came up. Um, understanding what it is and how it works and the need for it is um, it's it's a, a big green light in my book and uh, thank you for your presentation sure yeah, thank you uh, again it was uh, good to, to see the numbers and it was uh, it's also good to see that the uh, housekeeping items are moving right along mm -hmm. and uh, we appreciate that uh, a lot of energy and yeah, that was a riveting finance uh, meeting and we encourage <laughs> one and all to come and with that, I will uh, entertain a motion to. I, I move that the board of directors approve the contract to the <laughs> municipal code. Uh, should I say the the dollar amount? Not to sure. Go ahead. Was it not to exceed fourteen eighty? What was it? Six ninety. Fourteen six ninety. All right. With ongoing costs of uh, sixteen thousand or sixteen hundred two thousand per year, is there a second, second on that? Second. Second. Any further discussion? Public comment. Hearing none. Then all those in favor? Aye. Aye. So move. So done. <laughs> Item number eight: General Manager's report. Good. So we're continuing to work with uh, DUDEC on the update of our wastewater treatment strategy, uh, another report we have out there. Uh, we hope to take that to our uh, CAC meeting uh, the 1st of March. It's on uh, March 10th, or first meeting in March, rather. And then uh, subsequently bring that uh, update, uh, or work progress, rather, uh, back to the board on the 18th of March as well. So uh, we're also working on our Tilford water main design, which is our next water main replacement uh, project uh, for next fiscal year. Uh, we're currently looking at our uh, preliminary pipeline layout on that, uh, working with West Coast Civil that I believe was at our meeting before last uh, to introduce when we approved that project. And uh, another good thing that's kind of rolling out that I'm really excited about, I know a lot of staff is excited about it, is uh, our work order management system and the communication between our billing system, ENCODE, and uh, GeoViewer. So that's moving along. I got a little sneak peek at it last week. And uh, just for example, I think one of the, the biggest uh, improvements of that is, you know, our employees will be able to close work orders out in the field now you know, from their device rather than bringing that paper copy back in and, and having, uh, you know, our front office uh, gals have to close that. So another big improvement moving down so 
that ends it for me as far as updates. All right. I'll move on to uh, else? item number nine. Director's reports on meetings attended. This Saturday, we have the final two classes in our winter water saving workshops. Uh, the morning class is our troubleshooting uh, your homeowner's water system. And then the afternoon is a redo of our native plant and xeriscaping class. The first morning one is a hands-on, it's a smaller workshop type class. The afternoon is a large 30 people attending class. It's going to be very informative and I'm excited because these people are coming from our community. And just when we think, gee, maybe everyone knows everything. Nope, we have 30 people coming out of the woodwork. So that's this Saturday, very excited about it. The Oh, and that program is funded through grants. We're not paying for it. It's through the uh, Mojave Desert Resource Conservation District and the Alliance for Water Awareness and Conservation. The Sustainable Tourism Conference at the Copper Mountain College Bell Center is February 28th, Friday at 7 p.m. with guest speakers. We are invited, and I'm extending the invitation. It came to us, a personal invite, because water and tourism are impacted. They're going together and they feel maybe we should be at this. So I wanted to share this. We are all invited. Again, it's at 7 p.m. The guest speakers, one is from the state level. It's the State Chamber of Commerce. I think it's called the uh, Visit California State Chamber of Commerce for the statewide perspective. Then there's the Greater Palm Springs Convention and Visitor Center speaker for the regional perspective. And then we'll have our own David Smith from the National Park looking at the local perspective. But they are identifying we're being impacted. So I'm extending that invitation. And if you have more information, call the Desert Institute at Joshua National Park. They have all, all the details. Back at the Farmer's Market, March 7th, our theme, of course, will be promoting Water Education Day, which is on March 29th. Then the Morongo Basin First Responders Meeting, I attended that today, and uh, three things I want to share with you. The CHP gave the presentation, a lot of information, but of note. They claimed they discovered that our tourist population, <clears throat> Airbnb, VRBOs especially, we're woefully unprepared for our winter events, and they're concerned that this may be the case year-round about any disaster. They discovered that they came visiting without proper food, water, they stressed, and the ability to dig out. Now, my ear went up on water, so... I thought that was fascinating that they identified this is a big problem. Then the town of Yucca Valley will be sponsoring a survival community event on Saturday, March 7th at their community center called Help Your Neighbor, Help Yourself. Lots of demonstrations and things similar to uh, the Great Shakeout, but, and they feel it is similar, but they are doing lots there and they feel we can't do it enough. So I want to let everyone know about that. And lastly, the San Bernardino County seems to be hit with an outbreak of hepatitis A. They brought that to our attention that our area is not necessarily uh, safe. They feel that it is prevalent amongst the homeless, and they've identified we have a significant homeless population that could in fact, they're monitoring them actually. And they, want, they said they went from two cases to 57. I'm remiss in knowing the time frame, but they're calling it an epidemic. So they went from two to 57 in San Bernardino County. That being said, they passed out flyers on hepatitis A, how it's transmitted. By the way, it's transmitted in water as well as food. And so they wanted PUCs and water districts to be aware of that. Not that our water would have it. Our water's safe. It's when you're sharing bottles of water and things like that, you know. But our water's safe. It's just they wanted us aware of the way it is transmitted. So uh, if anyone is interested after the meeting, they want to come to me. I have this, I kind of scratched on it a little bit, but this is a full on on what to do for hepatitis A in the area. So that's my report. Thank you. 
Thank you. We have the uh, Mojave Water uh, Agency TAC Advisory Committee meeting on February 6th, and that was Director Hund. Thank you. Uh, there was quite a bit that was covered at the TAC meeting. I'll try to summarize it quickly. Um, one of the things that, that really caught my attention um, was one of the first items, and it, it sounds innocuous, the update on PFAS by California Water Systems Alliance. Well, PFAS, um, that's uh, um, uh, a, a group of substances um, collectively known as PFAS that um, are fluorinated organic chemicals, and they're part of a larger group of chemicals found in products such as carpets, clothing, furniture, uh, paper products, cookware, fire retardant, etc. And um, unfortunately, society's been using these for many years and they're starting to regulate them, but they're known as forever chemicals, <laughs> so that gives you some idea. And there are health risks associated with them, and um, they're regulated by the State Water Resources Control Board, and, um, and water agencies are required to test for them. And, um, and the exposure to them um, can be through like household dust and other means around the home, but there's increasing concern for uh, exposure in drinking water because they will, um, they, they have a tendency to accumulate in groundwater. And, and by the way, the, the testing for them is, is quite expensive. And if I'm reading my notes correctly from the meeting, um, I believe that um, there are going to be, um, uh, eventually be federal standards for them. So you can see where this is going. We could potentially be dealing with a whole uh, new class of chemicals that we would have to deal with and remove from our drinking water. The uh, State Division of Drinking Water Deputy Director is the one that sets the, um, uh, the estimates for chemicals and standards. And, um, and the federal government, um, there's enough concern that the federal government uh, pass the um, uh, PFA, PFA's action alert legislation on January 10th, uh, uh, 2020. And they've determined that at least 6 million people in the United States to date um, have exceeded um, the, the lifetime levels of consumption already of, of these chemicals. So, so I guess we all need to stay tuned for um, what will happen. And I, I don't know, does uh, staff, Mark, or anybody else have anything to add to that? Yeah, just that the, the district hasn't been required to test for that as of yet. So they've identified areas primarily around airports uh -huh. That's another uh, discharge of that, or airliners. So, so yeah, I'm just waiting to hear exactly how some of that initial data comes back. So, okay, thank you. Well, that's reassuring to hear that we haven't had to do it yet. So, um, then also, um, the um, they discussed the Mojave Water Agency appointment to the SB 200 Safer Drinking Water Funding Advisory Board and. Um, SB 200 uh, was passed on July 2019. It's the Safe and Affordable Drinking Water Fund. Provides a legal structure and process for funding safe drinking water for disadvantaged communities. Um, and the Mojave Water Agency applied for and was appointed to the advisory board, which is a good thing. And apparently they're working with the California Rural Water Districts uh, group to um, you know, identify uh, projects and uh, systems that are in need of assistance. And, you know, I don't know what our um, potential um, eligibility is, uh, uh, General Manager Ban and staff, but they did say that currently there's $40 million um, available. And so that, that was really interesting. And then um, also there was an update on the county drought advisory group. Uh, they had a stakeholder group meeting. And, um, and then also um, they are preparing to, uh, to do their regional urban water management plan for 2021. And, um, and I wanted to ask staff about that because they were indicating that if you do not um, uh, update your plan at the end of, I guess it's five years, that you can potentially um, be out of the running for certain grant funds. So 
I'm I didn't have time to look tonight to see when ours was last completed, but I'm guessing we're also up for ha having to redo ours. That's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. that'll be in next year's budget to get completed. So. Great, great. So, um, and um, then they also talked about the uh, governor's uh, resili resiliency uh, portfolio update and um, the. Um, the 2020 water resilience portfolio draft um, came out and um, the Mojave Water Agency commented on it. Um, it's a comment le letter dated February 6, uh, 2020 that I would imagine you can find on their website. And just some of the recommendations pursuant to that um, water resiliency portfolio I thought I'd read real quickly. One is to explore ways to further streamline groundwater recharge and banking efforts and provide technical assistance to facilitate the redirection of water during periods of extended high flows to allow water to sink into aquifers, including on agricultural land. Uh, make funding available for groundwater recharge projects with multiple benefits. Uh, coordinate grant and loan programs across state agencies to make funding for multi-benefit projects easier to arrange and leverage. Um, add a requirement to water management plans, which urban and agricultural supp suppliers submit to the state every five years, that mandates districts that received water from Delta-based projects demonstrate how they are reducing reliance on those supplies. Um, Plan, permit, and build a resilient tunnel under the Sacramento-San Joaquin Delta to safeguard state water project and Central Valley project supplies drawn from the Sacramento and San Joaquin River systems. New conveyance should complement existing and improved through Delta conveyance to promote operational flexibility, protect water quality, and support ecosystems. Uh, build on the integrated regional water management plan and other regional efforts to align climate scenarios and expand watershed scale coordination and investments to contribute to water resilience. Structure funding sources to reduce the hurdles for water projects that reflect integrated solutions, produce multiple benefits and improve wastewater function. Support the capacity, participation, and full integration of tribal governments and underrepresented communities in regional planning processes. Substantially reduce approval time for transfers. And I'll stop there and so on. So those are some of the recommendations in the water resilience portfolio. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Finance Committee, uh, Director Unger. One of the things we uh, talked about that is still in the talking stages, talking about money and saving money, is uh, how do we, do we pay it forward? Do we pay it off quick? Uh, interesting uh, discussion about um, uh, paying off a loan early. What kind of savings would be $300,000 worth of saving and interest? And also uh, our unfunded liabilities for our pensions and to start making payments, paying it forward, basically. So these are just, this is one of the interesting discussions we had at the Finance Committee that wasn't ready for any kind of board decision yet, but just kind of a throwing it out there. So I really appreciate that was an interesting discussion and really appreciated that. Thank you. And uh, Mojave Water Agency, Director Unger. And thank you, Gary. I also got that, uh, the resilience report and the Mojave's uh, uh, response to that, really good. And um, so many things that are in that water resilience report that the governor has put forward are things that Mojave's been working on. I mean, they are so forward thinking. They're just amazing. Um, I was at the their regular board meeting, and they did a, a mid-year budget review. Uh, their senior accountant said the agency's cash position will remain strong a $91 million budget. <laughs> and um, even their debt expenses are, are uh, $1.2 million under projections. And the IDMB, IDM debt is supposed to be paid off this year. On my property taxes, that's 45 bucks. So I'll take it. And 
<laughs> look at your property taxes. Uh, it's the Mojave Water Agency uh, M on there. Um, but there's still so much of this still hangs on the Department of Water Resources. And they're looking at estimated 7% uh, increase in costs to people like Mojave Water Agency uh, into 2025. And this will include, you know, that funding for the Delta conveyance, that tunnel, for all of us who get state water project water in the pipeline. Uh, one of the ways they're looking to, you know, they don't want to raise rates. They don't want to raise fees. They don't want to start tacking it onto, you know, their, their customers and, and and they're looking at doing these water exchanges, transfers that was talked about in that water, their water resilience report. They're looking at a ex water exchange deal with Irvine Ranch. It could be $3.5 million. And, uh, but yet, this will all depend on the allocation of water from the Department of Water Resources. Um, we are having a dry year. And I saw, I think it was on the Weather Channel, they were showed a big map of the country and all this weather, weather pattern in for the foreseeable future here, I guess this year is dry where we are, wet in the south where they're getting horrible floods. So climate change being addressed in that water resilience, it's it's for real. They're looking also too to get a $40 million, $42 million in property taxes this year. So that's a big help for them. Uh, water banking, also in that report, it's also part of their budget. And uh, they're, they're actually looking to bank an extra 1,696 acre feet in the Morongo Basin. And that would be in addition to what's already been taken. Um, and also at this meeting, uh, the directors approved a technical study with Kennedy Jenks not to exceed $1,171,089 to evaluate an expanded and very visionary program of groundwater banking in the Mojave uh, water agency sphere, even including a partnership maybe with the Apple Valley East Kern Water Agency. They do a lot of stuff with them. Uh, Lance Eckert, their director of basin management and resource planning, he's been working on this really intensely for about a year. And it's uh, workshops come up at the TAC, at, the water, at their regular meetings. Um, and he says, you know, one of his reasons here is that we're, we're ripe for it. He said, our ground it itself is the least affected by agriculture runoff, industrial and commercial pollutants, and our desert is actually a safe place to recharge water whenever we get a wet year. Uh, inf existing infrastructure can be utilized, but more is needed, and the uh, Bureau of Reclamation has made some grants available, and the board of, of Mojave, they'll continue to review this throughout the study and the project. And uh, yeah, also mentioned, um, uh, Newsom's administration, its draft uh, 2020 water resilience portfolio and the uh, response from uh, uh, Mojave's GM, Tom McCarthy, it really it covered so many things that they've been working on. And Mojave looks like they're gonna be a good, good place to be an important cog in this complex water issues and solutions in the state. Uh, among other things, they looked at the employee pay schedule for 2021 was adopted with a 2% annual adjustment Director Kimberly Cox was nominated to be LAFCO's regular special district member. She was originally appointed in 2004. She's still on that board. And Director Richard Hall was nominated to a vacant seat on the California Special District Association Southern Network. Thank you. I'd just like to add in this section, if I may, and this is a request um, for a future agenda item, um, employee recognition uh, of the district um, I think we, we have a uh, tuition assistance program. I don't know how many people are aware of that, but we have several folks on staff that have actually finished their degrees. And uh, I think it would be an excellent opportunity at a board meeting somewhere down the road to recognize uh, those individuals and uh, other employees that uh, have uh, earned uh, special recognition for whatever uh, they ha may have been doing during the, the course of the, the year. So. Can we put that um, as a calendar item uh, for a future agenda with any comments from the board? But here, uh, here. I'm excited about the, the, the folks graduating. This is a, this is a big deal, and, and we're, we're retaining them. So anyway, uh, thank you. 
Uh, move on to item 10, future director meetings, training opportunities, ASBCSD dinner, Sierra Lakes Golf Club. I have Director Reynolds on that, and that's February 24th. Mojave Water Agency Board of Directors, February 27th. Director Reynolds, going to be busy the 27th. <laughs> Citizens Advisory Council, March 10th at 6 p.m., Chairperson Karen Tracy. And the Finance Committee, which is always riveting, is March 11th, 9 o'clock. Yay! And that'll be uh, Director Unger and myself. Water Resources and Operations will follow, and that's Director Hund and uh, Director Reynolds. And Mojave Water Agency Board of Directors, that'll be Director Flowen, and that's March 12th. And with that, uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I move we adjourn. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So moved, so done. Thank you.